Welcome to a tutorial on Bitsy 8. In this video, we're going to look at branching lists using items. So in previous videos, we've been building across the various concepts we use in Bitsy. We've talked avatar, the thing we move around, tiles can be backgrounds or walls, sprites, things we interact with, and items, things we use. In particular, as it comes to items, and I will click on an item here under the paint tool, we have noticed that we use them up when we interact with them. So let's look at an example. I'm going to go ahead and place an item, this T, into the world right here. I'm going to go over and click play. And as a reminder, we move the avatar around using WASD or the arrow keys on the keyboard. And when I pass through, I have dialog, and then the item is no more. We use the item or use the item up through our interaction. Well, as we saw, when we use items, we change their number. As we interact with them, as we use them up, we increase their number as part of something called inventory. So in the previous video, we looked at how inventory increases as we interact with more items, and I'll show you that real quick. So now we've got two items right here, and with items selected, I'm coming down to inventory to pop out that tool. Notice items, T, and key, and as I interact with T, the number of them will increase. We have one, and we now have two. So the number of the item increases as we use them, as we interact with them. So how this becomes very useful is we, we can shape how we do dialogue or do interactions by doing a branching list. So we previously looked at the other types of lists that are available within Bitsy. We looked at the sequence list and the cycling list and now oh, the, and the shuffle list. And now finally we're arriving to the branching list. So let's come over here to a sprite right here. I've got a cat. I'm going to come down and open up, pop out the dialogue tool. So I've got the inventory tool and the dialogue tool. And notice we're balancing lots of different tools now. Over here in the dialogue tool, if I click add and I go to lists, we see branching list as the last of those lists I just mentioned. Sequence, cycle, shuffle, and branching. A branching list, though, takes a condition or a criteria in which one or more branches will be chosen based on the truthness of some type of condition. So let me click on this so we can see what I'm talking about. So if T, which is this thing right here, this item, in inventory, this is inventory over here, is equal equal to one, which is to say if the current number in inventory is one, do something else do something else. So if this is currently equal to one, and then we go talk to the cat, we want the cat to say something. T is one. Otherwise, T is not one. So remember, when we look at this right here, it flows from top to bottom within the dialog tool for whatever particular interaction we're looking at. So I'm a cat, flowed right into branching list, but I don't quite want that to happen. So I'm going to add down here, dialog, page break, click on page break, and I'm going to move it up. And now it will say, I'm a cat, there will be a page break, and then we will start a new page. And then if T in inventory is equal to one, T is one, or T is not one. So let's go ahead and see this in action. And as I play, pay attention over here to the inventory. Remember, it will change as we interact with items. So I'm going to go ahead and interact with a cat right here. I'm a cat. That's the first thing we expect to see. Next thing, T is not one. T is currently zero as shown over here. So T is not one. But we branched, that is, we chose one path over another path based on the current value of something in inventory, the number of items. So let's go ahead and collect a single T. And as soon as this dialogue closed, pay attention over here, this will change. There it goes. So now it's equal to one. We go back to the cat. I'm a cat, T is one. Notice the branch was based on the comparison, on the criteria that was created when we looked at that comparison, or what we sometimes call in programming conditions. So notice we can change these conditions. If T in inventory equal equal to one, which is to say is equal to one, or 
we can say is greater than or equal, less than or equal, greater or less than a particular number. And remember, as we interact with items, we use them and the number increases. So let's review what I've talked about so far. We can change dialog or what we think of as interactions for sprites and items. As we have seen, when we interact with items, we use them up. When we interact with sprites, we have the possibility of doing other things. And this also applies to items. Remember, items get used and sprites don't. Sprites stick around. So part of what we can add in dialog now is think of not only dialog boxes and page breaks that we saw in a previous video, as well as the shuffle, cycle, and sequence list, but now also branching list, which allows us to create different branches for possible paths within the interaction based on items that we have within our inventory. Inventory is another tool right here and matches to items. If we have an item over here in the paint tool, it will also exist as a possibility within the inventory tool as well. This allows us to match the two. As we add new items to a room, we also have them as possibilities to interact with within our inventory. We don't have to interact with them. We can just put items into a room and not really care about the dialogue implications. But if we want, as we're now starting to see about part about using branching list, we can create those conditions or those criteria for two different branches. So we go to the first branch whose condition is true right here, or we go to the other branch. And then possibly we could add even more branches. So items or variables or defaults based on other conditions we may want. And we can create some fairly complicated conditions if we want to. Most of the time, however, we generally want this. One thing is true or the other thing is true. We it is equal to one or it's not equal to one. And this allows us to branch within the interaction based on items that we have within inventory. But as a little bit of a foreshadowing for a future video, keep in mind inventories, items, and variables. We have two collections or sets of values we can work with within Bitsy. Items are not the only thing we can use. We can use something else called variables, which I'll discuss in a future video, to work with the same concepts we've now seen in this video, using branching lists and items within Bitsy 8. Thanks for watching.